A couple of weeks ago, Dehancer reached out to me for a review of their updated desktop and iOS application. And they said, be honest. So I was. I promise to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. There is no authentic film look. Let me tell you why. Film look could look like French New Wave warm D55 film print looks, or it could look like a one-to-one -one Rec. 709. It depends entirely on what you do with the tools and what your goal for a look is. No matter how good or bad the tools are, it will look terrible because of the lack of experience. Now, I'm no professional colorist, but I'm a director and cinematographer with almost a decade of experience. But more importantly, I also make YouTube videos, which means like you, I want it done fast and as close as it can be. I should mention that I feel like many of the reviews on YouTube about the Hunter are showing how influenced by trends the video creator space is. It's sometimes messy and overdone. A lot of the tutorials overdo grain and halation because I think they don't really understand what would cause those stains from the film stock in the first place. And you can't really blame them. It's going extinct, which is why one approach that I recommend is to use a reference image from a movie that was actually shot on film and matching that emulation as best as possible. I personally use shot on what and shot deck for these references. But this overdoing problem is partially the fault of the people at Dehancer. One of the reasons you see many people having poor color grading with their plugin on YouTube is because of their marketing campaign targeting micro YouTubers mostly. On a sample of very small YouTubers, there's a higher chance of having people that are not necessarily specialists at color management yet still have a viewer base that could meet the program. What does this mean? For the most part, film photography back in the day had pretty decent anti-halation layers. So when I'm trying to emulate film, I tend to shy away from glow and halation. And I don't use it too much unless I need them to hide the ugly edge of a highlight that was blown out in camera. And I think the same exactly about film. The non-linear behavior when film is exposed to a source that would blow out if shot on digital camera is very noticeable. For me, the main thing I want in film emulation is a good contrast curve and saturation that's denser in the low lights than highlights. To me, this is the essence of film in the first place. The grain, bloom, film, weave, vignette, and whatever else is just mere seasoning and I must say that Dehancer offers some pretty interesting saturation tools and highlight collapse. The biggest question here, let's talk about price and why. I'm going to talk about money because we are the business network. Every few months, at least several times a year, you can easily recognize which company or brand opts their marketing on which product because you see certain spaces flooded with reviews on that, including this very one. Sometimes this is a red flag for me and leads to being less interested in both that product as well as the creators. But I didn't want this to be one of those videos, which is why I'm as objective as possible. I believe that companies can price their products however they want in theory. Great thing is you don't have to buy it and your work doesn't depend on it. And as with every such an all in one applications, you need to be realistic about how many of its features you're ever actually going to use, particularly since you can recreate some of them yourself to an extent. I'm not sure you would be happy spending $399 and only ever using the same two or three looks again and again. However, with the cost of Dehancer Pro, I think it seems to be a good piece of software helping on getting high-end results if film emulation on digital is what you're looking for. If you're aiming for a very specific look, I mean down to the film stock, and can justify its purchase, then 100% get it. The settings and functionalities are insane. There's so many things you can screw around with. 
The price of the Hanser is reasonable, I think, given the depth of the tools. Now, the Hanser's grain is the best that I've seen, I'm not gonna lie. Resolve is okay in a pinch, but the Hanser's just... It just blows it out of the water. The halation is a bit more intuitive as well than Resolve's native OFX, and the Hanser is way more color management friendly than using Resolve's inbuilt LUTs. And if you want to use LUTs, hey, the Hanser can also generate them for you based on your settings. So here is my hot take on the price. I'm gonna come closer. The price is not an issue if you want to buy, nor is it an issue if you don't want to buy it. In comparison, the price of Resolve is unreasonably low at this point, depending on what part of the world you're in. However, don't let the low price of Resolve or other applications dictate your perception of the value of software in general. Sometimes it's worth paying for something if it speeds up processes and helps achieve things which might have been difficult with stock tools. Sometimes it's also not worth it to each their own. For most people's needs, which might just be having a film look on their videos without needing to learn too much about color grading, this program is good. It gives different options and offers a lot of customization. You could probably do it all manually, but having an easy to use interface like the Hanser really helps. And in the end, the goal is not necessarily to have a perfect reproduction of a film stock, but rather to be able to use different properties of the film look and play with them. So, should you be buying this software? There are a couple things that I want to say. First, subjectivity. It's important to remember that art and its appreciation are subjective. Some creators might feel that the exaggerated effect brings out a certain aesthetic that they're going for. They might not be aiming for strict film accuracy, but rather a film inspired look. This isn't a defense for inaccuracy, but it's a perspective to consider. So what perspective are you considering? Second, tools versus craftsmanship. Just like having a fancy pen doesn't make one a great writer, having a tool like the Hanser Pro doesn't instantly grant someone the nuanced understanding of film stocks. The tool is capable, but it's the user's responsibility to employ it correctly. Three, trends. Remember when teal and orange became the go-to look for everything? Trends influence content creation, the Instagrammy look, I pointed out, is a result of some popular creators doing it and others following suit. So if trend is what you would like to hop on, please. For research and experience, true film emulation demands an understanding of how different film stocks behave under various conditions. Now, not every content creator has had the privilege of working with actual film, so they base their emulation on secondary references which might not always be accurate. Once again, this is why I recommend checking shot on what for accurate references and shot deck as well. Five YouTube recommendations. Now, as for finding accurate tutorials, it might help to look for creators who have a background in traditional film photography or cinematography. They're likely to have a more authentic approach to film emulation. Also, maybe joining dedicated filmmaking and color grading communities could lead you to some hidden gems in terms of tutorials and advice. And lastly, doo -doo 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 -doo, do it yourself. Given your passion and clear understanding of the film aesthetic that you love, why not dabble into creating your own film emulation presets? You know, like point here being, if you're just looking for something fast, get this software, it does that. But if you're looking for something that will more accurately emulate film to the T, I don't know. You probably should be looking into shooting on film in that case. Anyways, if you're still here, I hope this has helped in making your choice now. In case you'd like to purchase the Hanser, you can use my code TimmyTireIsMe at checkout for a 10% discount. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how I emulate film stocks for commercials and my films. 
from scratch to finish. I mean, every single step. Subscribe if you'd like to see that and give this video a thumbs up so that other people can find this useful. If you have any comments or you'd like to just argue with me, please drop them below or find me on Twitter at Tamitayo is me. My work here is done. I've saved the world.